Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we are discussing a very significant international development. We are looking at how the Adani group has actually managed to get a clearance from the Queensland government in Australia for their coal project. And to talk about the kind of timeline of this entire deal and finally the kind of repercussions that this uh, project is going to have on Queensland. We have with us Paranjoy Guha Thakurta, senior journalist and Paranjoy you've been following this issue very very closely as well. And my first question is that many people on the ground are saying that the Queensland government has finally given in to the kind of bullying that Adani has been uh, doing for to get the clearance for this project. So what has actually happened how do you see the significance of this clearance? All right. Uh, let's take a few steps back. Yeah. Uh, on Thursday, the 13th of June, the Brisbane, where the Queensland government is headquartered, gave the, for, the approval uh, for this project together with the approval that came from the federal government based in Canberra. Now, you must remember that this project was initially proposed almost a decade ago. It was at that time described as the world's biggest greenfield coal mining project and among maybe the top 10 or 12 in the world, a project of its kind. Since then, what was originally proposed, it has been fairly drastically scaled down. And the reason why it has been scaled down is on account of the opposition by environmental groups. I'll, I'll give you some figures to highlight how it has yeah. been scaled down. Initially, it was proposed that over 10,000 people would be directly employed mm -hmm. and many times that number would be indirectly employed. Yeah. Now the company says that 1,500 individuals would be directly employed and roughly 6,750 would be indirectly employed. Yeah. Now, the writing on the wall was very clear. Today, Mr. Gautam Adani is predictably exultant. He is very, very happy. I, I quote what he said. He said, today our remarkable journey of conviction, resilience and commitment in Australia enters a new phase. And the Queensland Premier, mm -hmm. Anastasia Palaskul, who had been backing this project, yeah. she'd, she'd been really, see, she said she was fed up. Yeah. because the federal government had been taking its time. And you must remember that over the last 18 months, there have been at least a dozen different versions of the groundwater management program. Yeah. Now, why is this very significant? Why is it very significant is because of a number of reasons. But before I go into the environmental aspect, let me yeah. make flag two or three political points. Yes. It became fairly apparent that this project would come through, not only because it was going to create jobs, maybe not yeah. 10,000 jobs or 1,500, because in Queensland, this is going to be the first yes. coal mining project of its kind in more than 50 years. Remember, this is the biggest investment by an Indian company yeah. in Australia historically. but. The point that should be noted is that when, in May, the Liberal National Coalition won a surprise victory, nobody was expecting it. It was a third consecutive yes. three-year term, yes. beating anti-incumbency sentiments. And uh, the Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, he defeated his political opponent, Bill Shorten, who's the leader of the opposition, and he was heading uh, the, a Labour Party-led coalition which included the Greens, which were very, very vehemently opposed to the project. Yes. And the Prime Minister, Scott Morrison, has been a supporter of the mine, like the Queensland pre Premier. So in that sense, once there was the, there was the political situation changed in May, uh, one should not have been surprised that this happened. Now, you must remember that there were very, very strict environmental guidelines which had okay. to be approved of. And one of the important things, and then this is yeah. why the project is very significant, that this is a very, very remote area and many would consider to be actually the last of its kind, one of the last yeah. unspoiled desert areas of its kind in the world, which has one of the largest desert oases, which is the 
Dungmabula Springs complex. Secondly, it's also worth noticing that this area is very close to the Great Barrier Reef, which is yeah. the world's greatest coral reef system. It's a world heritage site. It's a very, very popular tourist destination. People mm -hmm. from all over the world. It generates a lot yeah. of of of. Uh, jobs also. So it was not just the mm. environmental activists and by the way the other important thing was it was very important and, and a plan it took some time the, that it was only recently approved that it was important to protect the habitat of the black throated finch which is a very yes. in, it's an endangered species of yeah. bird. And last but not the least initially I mean just a day before yeah. Thursday before this yeah. came the Australian Conservation Foundation won a major case against the federal government mm. because while evaluating Adani's North Galilee water scheme and its plans to pump out about 12.5 billion litres for from the Sutter River over, over uh, the, the over following two years of uh, negotiation, that's near the yes. mine site called the Carmichael mine site. And the federal government was hauled up by the court saying they had not properly assessed the representations and submissions given by over 2,000 members of the public. Last but not the least, two other points. Yeah. Initially, this coal mine was going to be 60 million tons a year. Yeah. Then it came down to half the size, less than half, 27.5. And initially, it's going to be, I think, 8 to 10 million tons a year. In terms of costs, First, it was supposed to be close to eight billion, mm -hmm. seven point eight billion dollars. Now it's down to one point five billion dollars, and almost all of it is now going to be funded by Adani himself. Because the banks are not willing to loan. Of course. Why the banks are not willing to loan? Because there are huge risks involved. The uh, international prices of coal have not gone up. Uh, uh, the the uh, coal is no longer fashionable. People yeah. are moving towards solar, yeah. and so uh, when in the Paris Climate Agreement, Australia pledged to cut down its um, you know sort of um, its emissions by twenty six percent. The period is two thousand five to two thousand thirty. Many people believe it's hypocritical that it should be. Yes. supporting this big coal mining project and pledging something else in, so, uh, in to the yeah. international uh, community, yes. So now you're picking up on the kind of reactions that are coming in from environmentalists as well. So there were huge protests and all of this was, would you say that this was ignored and this hypocritical stance was then taken? How has this happened? How has Adani group in terms of their influence has managed to convince um, this deal to get clearance now? Okay. Let's not underestimate Mr. Gautam Adani's power to yeah. influence. We know in India how he is rightly, wrongly perceived to be an industrialist who is very close to Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Yes. Uh, the fact is, even in Australia, hmm. he is, you know, his has become almost like a test case. Yeah. I mean, he, uh, to the environmentalists, he's the big villain. To those who support him, he's this great creator of jobs. But the fact is interesting. This first mine would actually pave the way for the establishment of six other mining exactly. projects. In fact, many argue that given the fact that international prices of crude oil, as I beg your pardon, not crude oil, thermal coal, have, have not really gone up in recent times, the, the view is that this project becomes viable only if those six other projects. five six other new projects come up, and importantly, the railway line which is supposed to connect that mining area, the Carmichael yeah. mining area, to the port, which is the Abbott Point port, which is roughly four hundred kilometers away. Now, initially, Adani wanted to build the entire yeah. the railway line, but now I think he's going to be build, building about half. But the uh, it's yet to be finalized. Let me put it this way, because that coal. Yeah. It's going to be exported. Yes. And much of it, Adani at least hopes, would be to India, mm. to his own power projects, Absolutely. which are um, some of which are located uh, in the coastal areas. And he, as you know, is an uh, controls the uh, way in which uh, ports, uh, many, many, many ports function, including the Mundra port, which is the country's yeah. biggest private port. Yeah. So with this development now and keeping all these factors in mind, how do you see this planning out in the sense that when do you see this actually taking place and do you actually see that irrespective of the protests, this project is actually going to now take off? Yeah, uh, at least 
that has been claimed by the CEO of Adani Australia. He, he's, he's, he's saying we're ready to go, we're going to start right now. The point is, um, uh, Adani Australia CEO, his name is Lucas Dow. He, he's saying we're going to go right away and, and, and they're going to start work immediately. But I believe that uh, they may not be able to proceed at the pace that they originally thought. Okay. And I think at the same time, the environmentalists, they're not going to give up that easily. Of course. I, I think uh, yeah. they're politically very influential and also um, they are in that sense far more resourceful and uh, let's see what happens. Uh, the, the, the railway line uh, uh, is yet to be finalized. The, the local, um, the original inhabitants, their association had also protested but it seems somewhere along the line the promise of jobs is yes. really what has uh, prompted both the Queensland government and the Australian federal yes. government to give it because uh, everywhere, including this country, you know, when you promise jobs, you become politically popular. Let's wait and watch and see whether uh, the the promise of new jobs and and uh, a revival of the economy of that part, which is a very remote part, it's yeah. the 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 north. Um, the northeastern part of Australia, whether those considerations prevail over considerations where coal is no longer the preferred mineral yeah. for generating electricity world over, all over the world, in Australia, in India, in China, everywhere yes. across the world, there's a movement towards uh, no, uh, towards renewable sources of energy. Yeah. And and finally at the end of the day, the economics of it all. I mean I mean at the end of the day you're going to export that coal to other other countries in the world. But but what happens to if the price of coal doesn't go up? I mean what happens to the economics of it all and and yes. how you're going to fund it all because as we know uh, banks across the world refused to fund it. Even Chinese banks at one stage thought would bail that project out. It hasn't. Now Adani has no choice but to fund the entire project. If you recall, there was a very controversial meeting in March 2015 yes. uh, uh, around the time the group of 20 countries met in and, and Prime Minister mm. Narendra Modi uh, with Mr. Gautam Adani and uh, Mrs. Arundhuti Bhattacharya who was then heading India's largest yes. bank, the State Bank of India. Uh, uh, signed M an MOU, a Memorandum yes. of Understanding, to extend a loan of about a billion dollars for the project, which never finally came through. It was never yeah. formally approved by the State Bank of India. So clearly, uh, it's not just the environmental aspects which yes. are contentious and controversial. It's also the economics of the project, uh, which are, uh, uh, I mean, which are being uh, questioned and how, how viable that project would be. Time alone can tell how. Uh, these considerations would play out. So on that note, if the economics of the project and the promise of jobs, how is all of this going to play out? We are leaving you with these questions and we will keep following uh, the project more closely. Thank you, Paranjoy, for joining us and giving us insights to the project and how it has actually transpired over the years. Thank you for watching.